Hi everyone, it's Friday night, it's time for another edition of Cheap Red Wine. And I actually was not going to make one of these tonight. I decided that I'm only going to make them on Friday nights when it's an odd numbered date. So probably it'll come out to every other Friday night. But at Chris's insistence, I'm making one of my Cheap Red Wine videos tonight. So I'm having a little bit of the Paradox wine that uh, Donna and I picked up at the Phoenixville Farmer's Market a few weeks ago. And um, like I said, you might want to check it out, Paradox Wine and uh, the Phoenixville Farmer's Market. If you live in Phoenixville, you definitely should go to the Farmer's Market some Saturday morning. It's a lot of fun. And uh, tonight, I'm, as you notice, I'm wearing a pretty old, beat-up concert t-shirt. And uh, that's for two reasons. First of all, I'm on vacation. I Today was my last day of work for a week. So um, I'm wearing just an old tattered t-shirt because I can do that, you know, it's Friday night. And... But also, and you'll notice it has paint splatters on it, it's kind of ripped up here. This is an old Sonic Youth t-shirt from a 1991 concert that Rick and I saw when Sonic Youth opened up for Neil Young at uh, Hershey Park Arena, which was a, a great show and a really good concert memory. And concert memories are what I'm talking about tonight. One specific concert memory from 1980. And this was the night that my dad and I went to see Steve Forbert at Widener University. I think it may have been called Widener College back then. And um, how it happened was like this. Well, first of all, Steve Forbert. Here we have his first album, Alive on Arrival, which came out when he was in his early 20s. He uh, was from Meridian, Mississippi, I believe came to New York City and was hailed as the new Dylan, just like lots of guys uh, and so many women too have been hailed as the new Dylan over the years. But um, he made some great records in, in the uh, his first couple records, Alive on Arrival, and uh, his second record was called Jack Rabbit Slim, and it has his hit song on it, Romeo's Tune, which is uh, dedicated incidentally to Florence Ballard of the Supremes. Maybe you remember the line in Back in My Arms Again. Uh, my wife reminded me of the line. It's Flo, she don't know, cause the boy she loves is a Romeo. And hence Romeo's tune, dedicated to Florence Ballard. That was Steve's big hit. And then in 1980, he put out his album, Little Stevie Orbit, and which was his third album. And he was touring behind it. And the tour was bringing him to Widener College which was not far from where I lived. I was sitting at home listening to WIOQ, which is some like dance music station now, but back then it was what was called a progressive rock station, but pro or prog station, I don't know what it was called. But the point is they played an, an array of music that uh, included Steve Forber. So the DJ, this was about 11 o'clock at night on a Friday night, said he had a couple of tickets to see Steve Forbert at Widener and whoever wanted to go should call him up. So I called and he picked up the phone and he said, hi, the DJ himself. And I'd like to preface this by saying that I had been for several years. I was like a radio call-in show junkie. I was always calling these shows, open to win some record album or tickets to this or t-shirts, whatever. And this was the first time anybody actually answered the phone. And the DJ answered the phone and he said, hi, I'm whoever, and you won the Steve Forber tickets. And I said in my like 15 year old squeaky, you know, adolescent boy voice, oh great. And he said, well, wait a minute, how old are you? And I said, oh man, this, this could really, you know, undo this magic moment I was experiencing you know, winning these tickets. And uh, I said, oh, I'm 15, but I really like Steve Forbert, and I really want to go. And the DJ said, well, okay, um, do you have someone that can take you? And um, I didn't know whether I had anyone who could take me or not, but I said, yeah, sure, I have someone who can take me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, fine, I'll put, I'm going to put your name on the list, and you can just show up tomorrow night at Widener and uh, you go see Steve Forbert. And I, so that's what happened. And I was going to go with a friend of mine, or I was going to ask my friend Dave, my grade school friend. Uh, we were scheduled for a trip to the mall the next day. So when we went to the mall, I said, hey, Dave, do you want to go see Steve Forbert? And I think 
how that went down was he asked his parents and they didn't really know much about it and so they said no he couldn't go so my dad who was probably going to be driving Dave and I to see Steve Forbert anyway uh, it was decided that he would go and uh, so me and my dad my dad and I headed down to Widener that Saturday night and I think there might have been a little bit of trouble locating my name on the list at first so there was a little bit of panic there and uh, but my name was found and my dad and I entered the gym I think it was a gym it was my dad who was about 38 at the time and me I was 15 and I don't know five or six thousand college age students and um, what's a nice way of putting this considering uh, the, the company that I'm keeping right now in, in this room there were certain aromas in the air certain things were being imbibed um, my dad and I obviously did not indulge in these things but uh, that was kind of an interesting experience I, that was the first time I'd ever um, ever became aware of that particular scent if you will um, but Steve Forbert he had a band at the time and they came out and they did uh, songs from all three of his albums it was uh, from what I remember it was a very rocking show um, he went through a lot of the songs I, I must have been familiar with Jack Rabbit Slim and her live on arrival because I wrote a very breathless journal entry later that night after the show was over in which I was extolling the extreme virtues of the Steve Forbert show and in that particular entry I mentioned a lot of songs by name and um, I really enjoyed the show I think my dad did too as I, I mentioned in the, the piece that I wrote my dad was rather curmudgeonly about going to rock concerts I can count on one hand the number of rock concerts that he and I just he and I went to together the Steve Forbert show uh, we went to a Dylan show back in 2001, which was an amazing show. Um, he did a ver Dylan did a version of um, Tangled Up in Blue that night that I still think about how he performed that version that night. Uh, we went to see Little Ed and the Blues Imperials, a blues band, once together. And uh, Little Village with Ry Cooter and Nick Lowe and John Hyatt and Jim Keltner. Uh, that gave my dad the chance to see Ry Cooter once in his lifetime and Ry Cooter was a, a kind of a musical hero to my dad so um, the Steve Forbert show was a great show but it was also a, it, it's become in my, in my mind it's become a really nice memory that I have of my dad and me together hanging out just the two of us and I um, I would have liked to have seen Steve Forbert when he came to Steel City last Sunday night just so I could have told him that you know to tell him what a great moment he provided for us and um, you know hopefully um, I just you know just want to let him know that and hopefully I can provide some of those moments uh, with me you know my kids and I so uh, as time goes on I don't know I think that's it for tonight um, thanks Steve Forbert and uh, as always thanks for your support